we present physics-based motion retargeting from sparse input. In this work, we introduce a framework that allows users to control virtually simulated characters of different morphologies from only a three-point input of an AR-VR device in real time. Let's see how it works. Our policy receives a headset and controllers as six-dimensional information and the current state of the character to actuate the joints in a physical world. At training time, we use a motion capture dataset to synthesize the three-point input and provide a supervision signal. We first kinematically retarget the pose, and then we use reinforcement learning to control the characters in NVIDIA Isaac. We use a simple distance metric between the simulated character and the kinematic pose as a reward signal. Once the policy is trained, we don't need any full body information, and we control the character with only head and hand controllers information. Here, we show we, how we use human motion capture data to train our policy. We manually match some joint angles of the human to conceptually similar joints of the creature. This gives us a rough estimate of the creature's motion, shown in the middle. However, this motion has many artifacts, such as feet sliding or no motion of the tail and ears. Nonetheless, we can still use it as a reward signal to train our simulated character, shown on the top, which removes the most remaining artifacts. After training, our policy drives the simulated character only by a headset and the controller information. We control the characters in real time, with sparse sensors and are robust to users not seen in training. We note that all the motions in this video are not seen at training time, unless specified. In this and all the subsequent videos, we invite the viewer to pause the clip to check the accuracy of the lower body motion and fit contact without any lower body information. We are able to retarget a full body motion with only the headset information, without the controllers. Furthermore, we generalize to users of different heights. Let's understand the importance of different components through these ablations. Here, we look at the importance of the head orientation component in the reward, which encourages the character to move the head in the same way as the user. We can see the character on the left shakes its head a lot and can't follow the user's head precisely. Similarly, with Oppi, the unbalanced heavy head on the right shakes a lot and makes the character fall. Contact reward component encourages the same gait as the user. Oppi trained without this component prefers a smaller steps. Also Dino performs a smaller steps and looks less natural. Because our characters are physically simulated, we get realistic movement of passive joints and can control their style. Dino's tail behaves differently whether we actively control it with the policy, passively actuate it as a secondary dynamic motion with a PD controller with fixed set points, or fix it. We can control characters of different sizes. As the size becomes closer to the one of the human, the locomotion style becomes closer as well. Crucial for real-time sparse retargeting is training the policy and value function of our RL model with asymmetric observations, that is allowing the value function to observe the full body pose and a future window for better value estimation. 
a policy trained without asymmetric observation is able to retarget data from the training set, but is not robust enough to generalize to unseen users and phase. Our method is easily reproducible. While we have a four-hour in-house mock-up dataset, we show that a model trained with a 75 minutes open source dataset, LaFan, is as capable and as robust. In fact, most motions shown here are trained with that. Let us now explore the limits of our models. A smaller character is more robust to unbalancing tasks than a bigger character. One limitation of our work is that it struggles at capturing uncorrelated upper-lower body motions. While it learns to follow the global position, fast and uncorrelated movements that have not been seen during training, like dancing, are hard. Training specifically for sports motions instead improves the capabilities of the model, like in this example of Dino retargeting a tennis motion. Please see the paper for further details.